All right, then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question traffic light. Uh, now, this is the implementation based question. So, I hope you read it once, but I'll quickly summarize the question for you. Uh, we are given a traffic light uh, which takes on three colors, red, green and yellow. And uh, at ith second, so you are also given this string S. And what does this string S say? Is, uh, this is of length N. And uh, at ith second, SI color is on. That is the significance of this string. right? So, if it is R, G, G, R, Y, what it says is, at first second, red color is on. At second second, green color is on. At third second, green color is on. Fourth second, red color is on. And at fifth second, uh, yellow color is on. Moreover, uh, this traffic light repeats its colors every n second. That is, it is cyclic. So, after this yellow, again red color. Then after red, again green, green, red, yellow. And they have also explained it, right? So, now coming to the problem. So, what problem is uh, asking you is, uh, you know which light is on at current moment, but you exactly don't know at what moment you are. So, you know, maybe if you are standing at a red light, you are just standing at a red light. You just know that you are standing at a red light. You don't know whether that red light is this one or this one. Now, what they want to find is, find the minimum amount of time in which you are guaranteed to cross the road. When can you cross the road? Uh, once you hit a green light, right? So, if you just consider this example. So, for every traffic light, you are given the string S, which describes uh, at a given moment, what is the color of traffic light. And what you know is, you know which traffic light is on at the current moment, but you don't know what moment it is. So, what time it is. So, you might be having, let's say, C equals to R. So, you might be standing here or here. If you are standing here, in just one second, you will be able to cross the road. But if you are standing here, you will be able to cross the road after one. Then the cycle repeats, right? So, red, yellow, and then again red, two, and three, right? So, you will be able to cross the road after three seconds. So, what they are asking is, uh, what they have given as input is N, uh, the size of the string, S, uh, which describes uh, at a given moment what color is on, and C, at what color you are right now, right? Uh, you don't know which moment you are, but you know in which color you are. And also, they have said that uh, C is always part of S. So, uh, what you have to find out is minimum number of second in which you are guaranteed to cross the road. So, how will you cross the road? Once you reach a green light, uh, you can cross the road in instant. So, that's what they have mentioned, right? So, I hope the question is clear. We are given two things, that is C and S, of course, the length of string as well. And C is basically the light on at the current moment. And you want to find minimum number of seconds in which you will cross the road for sure. Right. So, after this amount of time, you will definitely cross the road. Now, how would you approach this question? So, since you don't know uh, which moment you are, you will have to consider all the possible uh, places where this C is present. Right. So, in this case, for example, if C is R, you will have to consider that you might be standing here or you might be standing here. So, you will need to find out, uh, what you have to do is, you have to find out the nearest G from all the possible presence of C, right? For all the possible occurrences of this C inside this string, you will have to find the distance of the closest G, right? So, what you'll have to do is, firstly, you will have to search uh, this C inside your string S, right? Because you can be standing at uh, any given moment, because you're not sure at which moment you are. So, you'll have to find all the occurrences of uh, C in S, right? And then, you will have to find uh, the distance to the nearest G, because once you're at, at a G, you will definitely cross uh, the road, right? You can cross the road in an instant. That's what they mentioned. So, uh, find the distances, find the distances, find the distances to the nearest G, right? To the nearest G for each and every occurrence, right? So, I don't know how many occurrences might be there, but for every occurrence, you will have to find this distance. Let's say D1, D2, D3. So, let's say there are just three occurrences. Uh, or let's just say for a general case, there can be some K occurrences of C in S. So, there will be, you will have to find the distance to the nearest G, right? Because in this much time, you will be able to cross the road. And what you want is, you want to be sure that you are crossing the road. So, you will have to take maximum all of this, right? And of course, this is the answer, right? So, this is not much of a big deal here. Because since you can be standing at any position, your answer will be simply maximum of the distances to the nearest Z, fine? So, but how do you implement this? Uh, like, let's just see a uh, bare, like, simple high level time complex analysis of this approach. But this is fine, right? So, this is exactly what you want to do. So, this is like when say brute force or the approach or whatever the question is asking. This is all, this is one and the same thing. Find all the occurrence of C and S and find the distance to the nearest Z from each one of them. And uh, your answer will be simply maximum of all of those distances, right? Whatever that answer is, after these many seconds, you are definitely sure to cross the road. How do you implement this? Now, uh, if you try to implement it straight away, uh, there can be like uh, many occurrences of C and S. And for every occurrence, you will have to find a uh, distance the nearest g so in the worst case uh, what can happen is uh, you might be having let's say some order of n occurrences of c n occurrences of c let's if you are confused let's just consider this case 
let's say you have r r r r r and then so on uh, here it doesn't really matter what lights are yellow or whatever but in the end you have g you can have order of n occurrences of r let's say half of them are reds only and g is at the end so you can have order of n occurrences of c in your s and for each one of them if you want to find the distance the nearest g if you do a normal linear search uh, what will happen is you will have to scan through the entire string so order of n time will be consumed right at a very high level so asymptotically your time complexity will be order of n square but if you see uh, the constraints are such that uh, 2 into 10 power 5 so you cannot go more than n log n right so this won't work uh, like bare brute force implementation won't work we'll have to uh, optimize this implementation the approach is this fine but we'll have to optimize in some sense right in the end we want to find the distance to nearest z for each and every occurrence of c that you are sure cool and questions are uh, where things are repeating after every n seconds uh, what should come to your mind is a uh, mod operator can be helpful because if things are repeating after some time uh, if you want to reach at an uh, infinite index uh, mod can be helpful to trim down our search space to uh, some range let's say 0 to whatever you mod it with let's say r then you can trim down your search space to 0 to r minus 1 right what are the things that can come to your mind uh, if you want you know these things are repeating right so if you have a string like this r g g r y it is as good as since it is repeating it is as good as you have this string appended to itself so r g g r y you have this string appended to itself multiple number of times right you have this string appended to itself multiple number of times so either you can consider like two approaches uh, modulus operator can be thought of or maybe you can assume this string looks like this it has it multiple number of times what we want to find out is the distance from every red light so i'm assuming here that c is r distance from every red light uh, to the nearest g right so we are better off uh, just working on this string right if you want to just do that because uh, even if you work on just uh, s plus s your job is easily done right so you need not worry about this complicated modulus operations and all because from this r uh, you will be able to find this z fine for this r you need not worry about the complicated modulus operation you can just go one two and three steps ahead and you will do it right so to simplify this finding the distance the nearest z i'm not thinking about optimizing right now but i'm just thinking about how am i going to first operate on the input right now to simplify this distance calculation uh, we are better off just working on s plus s right so this is one optimization or you can the simplification we can do now we are working on uh, this string right but again uh, the di distance computation is still taking order of n time right uh, because you still have to go from every red light to every green light so this can uh, still be an issue so i'll show you one example where this can be issue let's say you have green light at the start uh, doesn't really matter what uh, here it is yellow 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 and then nearly half of the strings are red again the same problem will arise and you will have to compute uh, like this will be order of n square solution right how do you do it so firstly uh, even if you append the string so after appending appending this string like this your problem will be solved that your string becomes uh, operatable so after you have this of course for this r it will take just constant time for this r it will take constant time but again for this part for nearly this part again it will try to consume order of n time so your job is there's still a problem you can operate on this string that's fine but how will you optimize it so what you find out is going forward from every occurrence of c uh, which i'm taking here r at this case is not working out uh, can we do better like uh, can we do some like simple thing here now this is again a thousand rated question so it won't be very difficult thing here if going forward is not making sense can you come from back and try to make sense of it let's take a simple example here uh, to put things into perspective however uh, if you think it just a little bit uh, coming from back uh, things might be simplified a little bit right so what you want to effectively do is you want to uh, like this was your original string if you are confused so this was the original string and i've just appended it back of itself so that it becomes the string becomes operable very easily now uh, how do you do it so the normal way is not going to work can coming from back help is my question to you what you can do is you can keep track of uh, last occurrence of whenever uh, g was encountered so maybe you can uh, come from at this r what you can do is you can keep a note of let's say the, let me just name the indices 0 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 6 7 8 9 so whenever you are at a index let's say here you can uh, make a note of where was the last g present so the last g was uh, present at sixth point right so what you can do is the d1 will be what 6 minus 3 right when you come here what where what was the last g recent g that you saw uh, so you are right now first coming from the back right so once you are coming from the back 
when you are at this R, so this two R's are area of interest, right? So I'm not considering on these two R, I'll come back to it. But once you come to this R, the last G that you saw uh, was at 6. So D1 will be 6 minus 3. Now you go here. Now at, when you come at this R, what is the last G that you saw? The last G that you saw was at 1. So now D2 would be uh, 1 minus 0. So any which way, this time was 1 and uh, this time was 3. We already knew it, right? What about these two R's? These two R's are of no use to us. So maybe uh, you can put very small values for them. Uh, so how are you going to put very small values for them? Now anyway, this is a repeated pair. So this is not creating a problem. This 5, 6 is same as 0, 1. So that is not creating a problem. But what about uh, this R? Uh, there was no G before it. Now what should be the initial value of G for the first R? Uh, you should like this, this R anyway is calculated here, right? So this doesn't uh, add anything to our answer. So this should be very small value, right? Because in the end, we want to take maximum of everything. So what you can do is you can initially initialize the last 2 minus 1. Okay, I'll repeat myself again. I guess I went a little bit too fast. What I'm trying to do here is going from left to right is not helping me. Can coming from right to left help me? So what I've done is I've just appended the, str appended the string in the back of itself so that its string becomes easily operable. Now I'll come from the end and I'll keep track of last occurrence of uh, green light because I know that uh, I'll have to... Uh, Go to the nearest green light to me to cross the road, right? At whatever R I am. So I'm come here. But at this R, uh, this R is actually, you can say the repeated version of this. In the end, we only care about these two parts. Uh, these two, we don't actually care. So when you come here, this should uh, yield an answer, which is uh, which should not contribute anything to our answer. So what you have to do is uh, just uh, initialize last two minus one. So any which way, uh, this will compute last, last minus eight will be minus nine. This will be very nice. So this will be gibberish basically, minus nine. Uh, definitely your minimum time cannot be negative but fine uh, this r is anyway not you helpful to us then we come here then we come at this r right so but before this z right so this last will be changed to 6 and uh, so nearest z is at 6 so this distance should be last minus this index 6 minus 5 right so this is the you can say shortest time if you are at this r to cross the road right now we will come here now again you are at 3 right so what was the last g that you saw the last g that you saw was 6 so from this R, if you are at this the R, the nearest uh, green light is at 6 minus 3 at 3, right? You again come here. From this, what is the nearest green light? So last will be updated here. It will be last will be updated 2 here, then 1 here. And when you are here, now you will have to update again last minus this current index. It will be 1 minus 0, 1, right? So then in the end, what you will do is you are taking actually maximum of all of this, right? Maximum of what? Distance in the nearest Z. That's what you are doing, right? So yeah, that's that. Uh, let's just uh, quickly see the code for it. Okay, so here's the code. Uh, I've taken the input here, fine. And then the important thing is I'm appending S at the back of itself just to make the string more amenable and operable. Now, uh, two important things. Uh, first is answer. Uh, what is this answer? Uh, this is the maximum of the distance of the nearest uh, G for each and every occurrence of C in S, fine. And this last is initialized to minus one. Why minus one? Because we don't want to consider uh, a case where G has not occurred yet, right? Because that case will be already handled afterwards. So last is initialized to minus one. We are coming from the end, right to left. If G has occurred, update last to the last occurrence of G, fine. And when C has occurred, update our answer. Now, how do you update our answer? Last minus I. So last minus I is distance to the nearest G, right? So if G has occurred here, and when you encounter your C, which can be red, yellow, whatever, doesn't really matter. It can be even G itself, your distance, so the nearest z will be last minus i, right? So 1, 2 or 3, whatever. Last minus i will be the distance. Update our answer. Fine. So after this loop ends, uh, your answer will be updated. And you can just print out the answer. Fine. So yeah, I guess that's that. Uh, I hope you got something out of this video. I'll see you in the next one.